Hello, I'm Rod Lawton, and in this video, I'm going to continue our series on Affinity Publisher and how to create printed material for your photographic business or project. Now, so far in this series, we've been looking at everyday business stationery to give your photography business a professional look and a consistent image. We've made a business card, letterhead, compliment slips, a website banner, and even an email signature. But now it's time to try something a little more ambitious. Let's make a poster to advertise an upcoming exhibition. This will involve some more advanced design techniques and some new tools, including layer effects and artistic text. Now, don't be daunted by the work of professional designers. You don't have to do this for a living to create straightforward and effective posters. The trick is to keep it simple, keep it consistent, and don't clutter up your poster with unnecessary tricks. Once again, let's start with the business card document we created in the first video. There's no point in reinventing the wheel, and this already has much of the basic information we need. We'll use the File Save As command to save a new version. Then open up the Document Setup panel, select the Dimensions panel, and set the page preset to A3. This does assume you have an A3 printer, of course. If you don't, just use A4 instead. Your poster will be smaller, but it will still stand out on notice boards or doors. This is the same approach we used when turning our business card into a letterhead. And again, we need to make sure we select the vertical format in the dimensions panel. So back in our document, we need to set about rearranging the graphics and text box we want to keep and add in the new graphics and information to promote our event. We've moved the photographer logo, name and contact information down to the bottom of the document, and we'll treat that as a footer area. We don't really need the text frame listing the work undertaken since this is about a specific event. This leaves most of the document area free for our exhibition material. We'll start with a photograph which takes up the whole of the document area except for our footer area at the bottom. To do this, we can select the picture frame rectangle tool and drag out a frame from the top left corner of the document down to the bottom right, leaving just enough space for our footer. Now with this frame selected, we can use the file place command to locate and import our image. Because we're importing into a picture frame, it will be scaled to fit it automatically. We can of course move it around with the gadget in the middle of the frame if we need to change the, the cropping or the composition. We need to add the exhibition title. And for this, we're going to use the artistic text tool. This will enable us to do some more precise design work with the text without having to fiddle around with precise point sizes. With the artistic text tool selected, start dragging out a rectangle on the document. It will display a single character that fills the frame as you drag it, so just stop when you think it's big enough. You can easily change it later. That's the beauty of using artistic rather than regular frame text. What we actually want is a three deck or three line title with the word landscape large on the first line, the words photography today on the second line and some bullet points about the event on the third line. We'll create these as three separate artistic text frames for reasons which will become clear. So in the first frame, we enter landscape in all caps and set the font to Avenir Next Condensed. This is the font we've been using all along and it will ensure a consistent look. You can choose from any of the fonts on your system, but this consistency is important. Next, we create another artistic text frame with the words photography today and a third with the words exhibition, speakers, workshop, Q&A. Now you'll start to see the advantage of artistic frame text. Some of these text frames are just too large. So we can drag on the corner handles for all three of them to make each exactly the same overall width. And we can also drag on the centers to position them precisely. Straight away though, you can see the problem. You can't really read the text against the photo. To fix this, we'll use a simple but effective design trick, placing a partially transparent box behind the text so that the photo still shows through, but the text is now legible. To do this, select the rectangle tool and drag out a rectangle across the full width of the document to occupy the same area as the text. 
Right now, the rectangle is on top of the text and you can't read it. So in the layers panel to the right, drag the rectangle layer beneath the artistic text layers. To make this rectangle semi-transparent, we need to head over to the color panel in the right sidebar where you'll see an opacity slider, which is set to 100% by default. To reduce the opacity, drag this slider to the left and stop when it looks about right. Okay, well that's kind of working, but this will look better if the text is white and the semi-transparent box is black. When you're working with shapes and artistic text, you choose the three color swatches and stroke panels over on the right, and these are grouped by default. So first we select the rectangle, check that we have the fill option selected in the color panel, then swap over to the swatches panel and choose solid black. We can go back to the color panel to bring down the opacity again. Next we select the artistic text frames and we can shift click all three to edit them all at once. And this time in the swatches panel, we set the color to white. Lastly, we want to pick out the word today in a mid gray. So we can select that word alone and choose an appropriate gray in the swatches panel. We're not using the stroke panel at all here because neither our text nor our rectangle have an outline. But if we wanted one, this is where we would set the width. So after a little more adjustment, we're making progress, but it would be good to have the photographer's name feature more prominently. So we'll select all three artistic text frames and move them over to the right. Then use Affinity Publisher's ellipse tool which is on the same flyout as the rectangle tool to create a circle to the left of the heading. So hold down the shift key to create a circle rather than an ellipse. We'll use the swatches panel to make this a solid white so that we can reuse our logo here, but larger. We don't have to import the logo again. We can simply alt or option drag our existing logo from the footer area to make a copy. Position is so for our white circle, then drag on a corner handle to make it larger. Remember, this is a vector graphic, so you can scale it up or down at will without worrying about it pixelating. Right, that's the main heading done. What about the exhibition info and timings? We want three columns of information here, showing the topic in the first column, the time in the second, and the speakers or title in the third. There is a complicated and an easy way to do this. The complicated way is to use a single text frame and set up a series of tab stops for each of the three columns of information. Alternatively, you could try to do this with the table and Affinity Publisher does support tables. But you can also use a quick and dirty approach that's simpler and rather more flexible. Uh, design purists should look away now. So first we create a text frame and set the text style to bold and right aligned. Next we alt or option drag this text frame to create a copy and set the text style to plain and left aligned. Then we use the same trick, duplicating the second column to create the third. Now we can enter our information using returns where necessary between the lines to make sure the information lines up as it should. Because the text frames have identical formatting, the line spacing is the same and publishers automatic guide snapping means they will snap into alignment very easily. We've nearly finished, but we'll do a couple more things. First of all, we need to add a text frame just above our list of events and timings, just to confirm the date that the exhibition is going to take place. But we'll also add a bullet or a flash, whatever you want to call it, to act as a kind of call to action. So for this, we'll use the ellipse tool again, but this time we'll set the color to a solid red. Then we create a text frame to list some of the things that the audience will get out of this event. In Affinity Publisher, you can add text directly within shapes, but sometimes it's easier to position it how you want if it's in a separate text frame. Once you've done that though, you'll probably want to be able to move the text frame and the flash around as a single item. And to do this, you select them both and use the layer group command. You can group any objects in Affinity Publisher and then manipulate them as single objects or select them individually for editing. They are shown as nested groups in the layers panel. And now let's add a drop shadow effect to our red bullet. Drop shadows have fallen out of fashion somewhat in the modern era, which favors flat design, but fashions change. Drop shadows might make a comeback and here's how to add them. We don't need to drill down to the red circle as we can apply the effect to the whole group. 
just click the FX button at the bottom of the layers palette and choose the outer shadow option. The angle gadget at the bottom is for when you want to create the look of an angled light source. If you don't want this and just want a so-called proximity shadow, as if the circle is floating just above the paper, leave the offset slider set to zero. We'll stop there. We've shown how to create a simple poster in Affinity Photo that uses the same logo, information and typefaces as our other documents, but also introduced some more advanced design tools, including artistic text, opacity adjustment, shapes and swatches. But there's more. We're going to use our assets and designs to create a tri-fold leaflet that you can print yourself or get printed and an ebook that you could give away, sell or offer as training material. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time.